just say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank, thank you, God, because first you woke us up this morning. Thank you, Lord. Yes. God, you allow us to get something to eat. Thank you, Whether Lord. it was what we wanted or not, you allowed something to be placed in our belly. Yes. And we come to say thank you, God. Yes. Well, thank you, God, because we're yet alive. Yes. And we're yet alive, God, because we know, God, you placed us here for a purpose and for a plan. God, we come at this moment on the last month of this year that we will never see again. All is gone. We can't catch up and make it up or fill it in or go back. It's gone. So we come to say thank you. We thank you because you brought us through some storm. You brought us through some hardships. You brought us through some disappointments. Thank you, God. Oh, 
will be Hebrews. Yes. Coming from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 16 to 20. Amen. That's Hebrews chapter 6, <laughs> verses 16 to 20. Amen. Amen. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 16 to 20. And it reads as thus. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible it's impossible for God to lie. Uh -huh. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, uh -huh. which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, okay. both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, uh -huh. whither the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus oh, made a high priest yeah. forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. The word of God is well, already God. blessed.
just wanna say. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you. I, 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 oh, we, we thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Ah, hallelujah. say to God, thank you in our giving. As we prepare our hearts and minds to give. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we continue to worship you in spirit and in our giving, we want to thank you, Lord, for all week long you have blessed us, overwhelmingly blessed us in more ways than we can ever imagine. So we come this morning to thank you for what you've done and still doing in our hearts, in our lives. Thank you, Lord. We just sang it for the food on our table. Oh, Lord, we know that you're able to bless us. Oh, you've been a friend that stick us close to a brother. So right now, Lord, as we come, we want to thank you in our giving. Lord, let this giving be for the mission and the upkeep of your church, your building, and your mission. This is our prayer, and we say thank you, Lord. For those maybe the money don't have any, just come. Touch the basket and encourage our hearts because a blessing is coming. Let us find the Pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Follow the lead of the ushers. All things come of thee. All things come of thee, O oh Lord, and of thy own as we Oh, man. Oh, 
Amen. He saw me. He saw me. Yes, yes. He looked beyond the crowd. Save the wretch like me. Thank you, God. If he had to die, Lord knows I would not, I would not be free. Glory be to God. He was looking out. For me, he saw me. Yes, yes. Thank God he saw Thank me. You, Thank you. He looked beyond the crowd. Take your time, brother. Say the rest like me. Yes, oh, if he had not die, right. I would not, I would not be free. Glory. He yes. saw me. Listen. I was standing at the altar. Well. I was seeking for the Lord. Mm -hmm. My heart was so heavy because I knew I was lost. Sing till. Suddenly I heard a voice. It was from Jesus and it was saying. Yes. Doesn't mean that something is wrong. It only means yes, something yes, good yes. is going on. All you right. know what happened? He saw me. Oh, he's over to tell your neighbor. He saw, he saw me. Yes, yes. He looked beyond the crowd. Well, oh, yeah. like me. Yes. God knows if he had to die. Well, Oh, no, I will not be free. Glory be to God. He saw me. He saw me. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, he saw me. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I'm glad about it this morning. He saw me. Listen. Glory, yes. glory, yes. Sing so. Sing so oh glory, glory. he saw me, y'all yes. help me sing, glory, glory, oh glory, glory, I say glory, yeah, 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 glory, he saw me, he saw me, I was standing at the altar, glory, speaking for the Lord, glory, yeah, my heart was heavy, y'all, glory, oh, because I knew I was lost, y'all help me sing, say glory, yeah, glory, oh, glory, glory, yeah, glory, 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 glory. he saw me, he I was a wretch yeah. done, oh yeah, glory. lost in sin, but Jesus came, yo, glory. came and took me in, I want to thank him this morning, I say glory, 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 yeah, glory, yeah, glory, glory, glory. he saw me, he Glory. I was seeking for the Lord. Glory. Yeah, my heart was heavy, y'all. Oh, because I knew I was lost. Y'all come on and say, say glory, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory. Oh, glory. Glory. Yeah, glory, glory, glory. He saw me. He saw me. I lift my hand and say glory. Glory. You didn't have to.
to do it, but you did. No, you didn't have to do it, Jesus. You didn't have to do it, Jesus. Everybody say glory. Glory. Say glory. Glory. Oh, glory, glory. Glory. He saw. I say glory be to God. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. Yeah. Glory be to God. You pick me up. Glory be to God. You plant my feet on the ground. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. He saw me. He saw me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for this gathering. We thank God for this first Sunday of the last month of the year as we begin our Advent season. This Sunday, the Sunday of hope. That's why we lit the candle. We Thank God for all that he's doing with us, to us, and through us, just because he sees us. With our hearts and minds are open, let us pray. Dear precious Father, we thank you, Lord, for seeing us. We thank you, Lord, for seeing about us. We thank you, Lord, for coming by here when two or more gather. We thank you, Lord, for being able to be in this place at this time to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, God, we love you. We adore you, Lord. We, are, we, we just want you, Lord, to be here in our lives. So right now, Lord, we need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, Lord... We don't know what we're going to do. We trust you, Lord, in this week, in this season, in this day of hope. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the, the love and understanding that you are our God and we are your people. So right now, Lord, slow down tongues and open up hearts. Let the words of this mouth and the meditation of this heart be accepted in our sight, Lord, your strength and our redeemer. Move God and lead us, Lord. For those who don't have a relationship with you, let them be, right now be convicted to follow you and believe in your son. For, Lord, we know that you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. It's just in Jesus' name that we pray and the people of God say together, amen, amen, amen. We thank God for you who are here and those online. We thank God for this place at this time. And if there be a, a, a focus, a title, if you will, it would be the Hope Rock, the Hope Rock. Um, thank um, the Reverend for reading the scripture today. Um, Hebrews, the 6th chapter, 16th to the 20th verse. But um, we're going to work on that first sentence in the 19th verse, if God was willing with us this morning. Hebrews 6, 19a. Um, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure, the hope rock. Uh, beloved, I think it's very interesting. Uh, I kind of messed up this week because someone asked me, um, so what you going to do? Where God will lead you on Sunday, one of my preacher friends, I was like, well, uh, I, I, I realize now that I lied to him. Because I told him I was apprehensive about this Sunday. The lie wasn't that I was apprehensive. The challenge was how I'm going to say what I got to say. So pray with me and for me this morning. The whole block. We're in a season where it's challenging for us. And I think part of the challenge is this. We forgot to have hope. Because of the world, we forgot to have hope. Because of sometimes we don't read the way we're supposed to read, we forgot to have hope. And we forgot where our hope lies. And when our, when our hope lies in a, in a different thing, I'm not going to say wrong because y'all hope what y'all want to hope for. And your hope relies in a different thing. When that thing fails you, you become hopeless instead of hopeful. And so just to help some of us along who may be going through, especially in the season of Advent, and I know some of us like to celebrate our birthdays for the whole month. So if you like to do that, let's celebrate Jesus' birthday the whole month. He, he gave us some guidelines with each Sunday being a different thing in the season of Advent. So let it be the whole month. Amen. Amen. But um, if you ever look for something in your challenge, you look for something and you don't know which way God is taking you, you don't understand why he's doing what he's doing. You know now if we have cars and we have a manual for our car, if you say, you want to look at your tires. There's a certain section for tires. I submit to you that when you have challenges and you have strife and, 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 and you don't know why life is going left when God wants you to go right, um, Hebrew is a pretty good book to go to. Yeah, yeah Hebrew is a pretty good book. Yeah, yeah. Because the Hebrews reminds us, especially when we get to hear, that one, God doesn't lie, even though we don't like sometimes what he says. That's right. Um, God always tells us what we need to know, even though there's some things that we don't want to do. 
Hebrews, that particular um, scripture that tries to warn us against things that we um, slip on sometimes, you know, because sometimes we hear stuff that tickles our ears and we go that way instead of this way. And as we're talking about Hebrews, we're at a point in Hebrews right now where he's reminding us that, yeah, life, life, life can get hard. But see, watch this. God never said it wouldn't be. And so sometimes uh, the challenge comes in when we say, yes, Jesus, we love you. Yes, Jesus, you gave your life for us. Yes, God, I believe in everything you said. And now I realize, God, there's a reason why you left us to comfort her. Because you knew one day we'd need comfort. That's right. and, 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 and the challenge when you come to the Hope Sunday, you know, Peace Sundays are pretty easy, you know. Yeah, you understand you need peace. Joy Sunday, of course, we all want to have joy. That love Sunday, we're coming out. Yeah, love. Oh, we got to have love. He even tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves and love your neighbors as I love you. Love is a pretty easy Sunday. But this Hope Sunday, Hope Sunday is a fun when everything's good and good. Hope Sunday is a fun when we don't have any problems or issues. So everything's good and good. It's easy to have hope when everything is beautiful. You know, unicorns are singing and, and the butterflies are doing it and everything's 80 degrees and the sun's shining. About two clouds, that's about it. And the two clouds look like hearts. Um, hope, hope is easy when life is like that. But can you have hope when life gets hard? Can, can you have hope when, 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 when uh, people are swearing and depending on themselves and not on God? Can you have hope when, when nobody's talking right or asking right? Can you, can you have hope when your challenge is facing you? Can you have hope when it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel? Can you still have hope? And, 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 and Paul's kind of talking about it because, like I said, Hebrews, that thing when, you know, we're not saying God isn't in control. Just sometimes we feel like man has too much power. And we're not saying God isn't in control, but sometimes man's free will infringes upon our free will. And when, and when, when life gets rough and the going gets tough and the hills get hard to climb, um, and you started out a long time ago. Yeah, I'm getting caught up on that song. Let me go. Let it go. Um, when it's challenging without the answer, when it's challenging and you have the answer, but you don't understand why the answer is the answer. When it's challenging because um, I see the direction, but God, to be honest, I don't want to go that way. And I'm thinking about doing a different way. Do I still have hope that a God who sees me will see me through? Do, do I have hope that, that a God who, who, who says he has me in perfect peace, whose eyes are stayed on him, I've been watching him, but I'm finding myself it's hard to be peaceful. Will I still have hope when the things seem greater than me? When the, the, forget the test, I can't even pass the quiz sometimes. And he be throwing surprise quizzes at me too. Uh, um, can I still confirm that he is able when I feel hopeless and not hopeful? And, 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 and here, here's the thing that, and, and y'all knew I was going to say this before I even started talking, because it does boil down to your faith. You can't have hope if you don't have faith. You can't have hope if you don't activate your faith. You can't have hope. You can't be hopeful without being faithful. They both work together. So by the time we get to this particular chapter, this particular book, um, Paul is trying to help us to say, look, I, um, I know sometimes it feels kind of crazy. I, I, I know um, that you, made, you can make the argument that things should have been better by now. I, I know you can make that argument. I know you can make the argument that you thought if you did this and studied for that and did this, things should have been different. I know that sometimes it seems like it's too much pressure because people around you are already speaking into you and they're not necessarily speaking life. I, I know those things are happening, but understand that God never said it wasn't going to happen. What he said was, I keep my promise. What he said was, I will always see you, and I will, I will always respond when you pray to me. What he said was, I will never leave you nor forsake you. What he said was, I'm your God, and I will be your God. I will be your anchor. I will be your bulwark. I'll be your shield. I'll be your helper. But he never said that life was going to be easy. And when life's not easy, you need to have hope in me. You won't understand everything. In fact, there's some things you'll never understand. It says that, right? Even in Revelation, we've been reading the Bible. Amen. So there's some things that you'll never understand. But one thing you can understand is I do not lie. One thing you can understand is that I love you so much that I gave you my son. 
What you can understand is that I am God and I'm God all by myself. I am the Alpha, the Omega. I'm the bright and morning star. What you can understand that if you truly believe in me, there's no way that you can't have hope. Because I'm still God. And I'm still you. And you're still you. And you're still mine when you say yes to me. So, so Paul is trying to help us with this argument this morning. And, 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 and don't get me wrong, the reason why I said I was challenged because, see, what do you do when you love God on a bad day? What you going to do with your new grace and new mercy self when you get up and it just ain't that day? It's, it's, it all, it ain't that day. it's not that day. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't that day. I know you're a good Christian. I've never had those bad days that I'm talking about. But every once in a while, oh, my, I say, oh, this day ain't the day. I'm, I'm, I'm God, please don't let people say, Blue to me, because they say blue, they'll realize it's not that day. Amen. Okay, sharing a little bit too much, but I'm just saying. Um, you have to understand that God's purpose is very clear. You are created, and we were created to, to worship him. We were created to understand that he's a different nature from us. We were, we were created to understand that once we say yes to him, that we will be treated as foreigners in this land, because frank, like, quite frankly, we are, because we understand and hope on things that the world don't understand. How can you hope in the middle of fill in the blank? How can you trust in the middle of this is happening to you? How can you stay faithful to a God who's faithful to you when it seems like the world's not being faithful? How can you have that type of ununderstanding, unexplainable hope? This is the Sunday that we celebrate that we know he is coming. He told he was coming 2,000 years ago, and, and he will be born, and we have a hope. Not only will he be born, but once he's born, he will give us hope. So, so he started by saying, all right, once you, once you, once you understand God is God, there's some things greater than ourselves. Once you understand that God is God, there's some things that, that, that you need to grow on and work on. You have to study and so self-approve. You have to keep your eyes focused on him. Once you're saved and you believe you're saved, God wants you to understand that I know the world changes, but God has an unchanging nature. God is going to be God no matter what. He's going to be there no matter what. He's going to look out for you no matter what. And yes, the world will shift and change, and God is still God. Oh, the purpose is very clear that there's two things you need to understand, that God never lies and God never leaves. He never lies and he never leaves. Oh, he never lies and he never leaves. So when you take yourself down a road that, you see, that seems impossible, he's still there. When he, when he tells you that there's some things that's, that's my battles, he's not lying. Some things are spiritual, and they are his battles. We have to understand which one is different, and you got to pray without ceasing to understand that God is working on your behalf. Yes. Yes. And he doesn't lie when he goes, All right, take, take a brief breath. His way is not our ways. So you have to have hope that when it doesn't go your way, and you believe in him, have hope that it's going his way. When they go your way and things pressure you and people coming in from the left to right, understand that if you didn't leave and forsake you, it's still his way. Have hope that his way, the righteous way, will eventually be the right way and it'll all work together for the good, even when you don't see the puzzle pieces. It's all working together for the good. Don't you know we can't live without hope? We'll find ourselves in a dry place without hope. We'll run to the desert on our own without hope. We'll run out there with no sustenance without hope. We can't make it, family, without hope. Watch this. And we need to put our hope in the right place. See, see, when, when, when we cease to hope, we let despair take over. When we cease to hope, we, we worry about tomorrow. And he already told us tomorrow will take care of itself. We cannot see, we cannot exist without hope. Hope is essential for us to walk in the light. Hope is essential for us to understand that God will always be there. I hope he is looking at me right now so he'll know exactly where I am because he is a God who understands and will go get that one and leave the 99. That's the hope that I have. And that hope breeds trust, and that trust breeds belief. Oh, the reason why I know God will work it out because I have hope in him. The reason why I know God will work it out because I have faith in him. The reason why I know he'll work it out because he told me and his word is true. 
See, see, here, here's the thing, and, and, and he's going to give us three things, and then we're going to roll out. Thank you, Paul. Um, we have this hope that, that does a couple of things, and, you know, AME, so it's three things, amen. I'm sure you'll say, well, Pastor, I can give about two more things, but we'll just put some subtitles on that. Um, we have this hope like this. Watch this. The hope is an anchor for the soul. Your mind will fade away sometimes. Your heart will give out because you don't trust it anymore. You won't know which way to go. So when I talk about hope, I'm not being a minimalist. I'm telling you, you have to hope deep down in your soul. Uh, um, he gave us a hope that, that th there's a thing that we need to understand, that our hope is our refuge because we believe in him. See, see here's the thing I've always liked, and I'm going to go to Old Testament again with, with, with um, Elijah. God knows exactly where you need to be to handle the storm. There was this guy named Elijah who was laying out there because he had given up no more hope. He was trying to die in the woods. And God woke him up and said, why are you here, Elijah? And he tried to explain to him, God, I got issues and stuff that are working out. People been talking about me, and I'm tired of it, and I'm tired of all this, and I don't want to deal with it, God. You haven't explained that to me. I've been trying to talk to you. You ain't talking to me. So what you want me to do about it? So I'm going to just lay right here until you tell me something different. Okay? That's my version of it. Read First Kings for yourself. Second Kings for yourself. Um, but God said, get up. Come and get up. And God sent him to a cave because God needed, needed him to get up and be somewhere out of his current environment in order to hear a word from God. Sometimes he makes you move to a place that seems dark, but the only reason is he tried to talk to you where you were, but you weren't listening to the movie the way you need to be, so you pay attention. So don't get mad when you're at a bad place, you thought, and you go from a bad place to a dark place because that may be the perfect place for you to hear his voice and have hope in him. So God took him to a place. But, but Pastor, why he take him to a cave? You know why he took him to a cave? Because God said, look, I'm about to talk to you. And I don't know if we ever caught this, but see, he goes to the mouth of the cave. It's like a big storm coming, wind, rain, all this kind of stuff. But God wasn't in all this stuff. But he, but he was in a still small voice. Um, that's the Cliff Notes version. Like I said, you can read it for yourself. But the key is about hope. The reason why God sent him to a dark place was just like a cave, because God knew the storm was coming. Can you imagine if you're in the middle of the woods and a big storm comes? Ever been everyone camping and it rained on you? Just me? Okay, I'm the only, I'm the only country boy scout here. All right, no problem. Um, it's horrible to be outside in the rain with hardly no tent when the rain comes. No umbrella, no nothing. You're miserable, you're tired. So, so God pulled him out of that environment, put him inside of a cave, and then the storm came. We get mad. When a storm comes, and when to act like we leave hope, we lose our hope when a storm comes. Next time a storm comes, think about where you are. Because see, this is the thing about God who, who sees us and knows us and knows how much we can bear. When the storm comes and the winds are raging, when the storm comes, you feel distress. When you don't know where to turn, first thing you do is look at where your feet are. God never said he would hold back the storm. Have hope and be in good cheer. He'll put you in a perfect place to stand the storm. Sometimes we get mad at the storm that God lets hit us without realizing the reason why we'll be able to sustain the storm because he got you to the perfect place to stand to be in the eye of the storm. It would have been worse if God didn't direct you to the place where you were when the storm started. So see, that's why in the middle of my storms, I still have hope in him because he knew exactly where I was when the storm hit. He knew exactly what it was when the, warm, when the winds came in. He knew exactly what it was when the, when the rain started coming. He knew exactly where I was when people started talking about me. He knew exactly where I was and what I did do and what I didn't do. So I ain't worried about what I didn't do. As long, you can talk about me all you want as long as you tell the truth. Because if I did it, I did it, and I just got to live with it. You can talk about me. All, you can talk about me now. You can talk about me in the parking lot. You can talk about me down the street at the gas station. As long as the truth, have at it. Because I have hope in God that when they do form the weapons, that he'll know exactly what I can handle. Yeah. So, so, so those who believe, our hope is in God because, see, being the anchor that we have in our faith, he'll be the rock that we can lock on to. Yeah. 
protects us. He's our refuge, our shelter. He's our protection. He's the right. So, so our hope is that he continues. Our hope is in that he's the refuge for us. Yeah. That, that, that we'll hang our, our, our anchor on that rock. And when the storm hits, he knows exactly where we are. When the storm hits, he sees how much we can take. When the storm hits, he helps us to weather the storm because he's with us in the storm. Yeah. See, see we, may, we may flee sometimes and go to a refuge. We may go into caves. We may go to different places trying to hide. But we have to understand that God knows exactly where we are. So a true believer understands that through my faith, when the storm hits, God still sees me in the storm. Through my faith, when the storm hits, he knows exactly where I am. When the storms hit, he guided me here because he knew if I was anywhere else, I could not handle the storm. So my hope is, <laughs> as he sees me through, that I learn something from that storm. Let me tell you another secret. He wouldn't send a storm if you weren't supposed to learn from it. He wouldn't send the craziness if you weren't the only one that was halfway sane. I know we've been there. Why am I the only person in here that feel like I'm sane? Because he wants you to see it, to understand it, and to move forward from it. So, 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 so the, the, your belief is your anchor, but watch this, watch this. Our hope is also in God being our anchor because, watch this, because it'll keep you from being aimless. Don't you know sometimes a storm comes to make you sit still? There's some people who try to ride out the storm. They be trying to go on a boat and go over there. Stand still and know that he is God. He allows a storm sometimes to come just like with Elijah. Okay, go sit down somewhere. Look at what you've been doing. Understand that what you've been doing. Look why I let you to go exactly where I look at your feet. Yeah. Look at your body. Where are you right now? You have survived yeah. the storm. So not only does he let you lay down an anchor, he lets you look and live. Not only does he let lay down an anchor, come on, family, he lets you revisit your soul. Not only does he let down an anchor, you understand that where you're standing right now is firm and secure. See, the reason why you can understand it's a storm. Because you still have a semblance of your right mind. The hardest thing to be in a storm and not be in your right mind. The hardest thing to be in a storm and not have no idea what you're in the middle of. Oh, the blessing is to be in the middle of a storm and we're saved by hope. To be in the middle of a storm and we're saved by hope that's not seen by man. We're in the middle of a storm and understand that I can still have hope that God will see me through. And when God sees you through, oh, he'll set you on to a higher place. Uh, your faith is your anchor. He'll let you be in a firm place through the middle of the storm. And finally, the other thing about this storm thing, the reason why we have hope, because he still talks to you in the storm. The storm will never be too loud till you can't hear from him. The storm will never be too boastful till you can't hear from him. It won't be too much confusion till you can't stand still and know that he is God. Your faith is your anchor. He is the firm rock that you can secure it to. And then in the middle of the storm, he still speaks to you. He still walks with you. He still talks to you. He still tells you that he's his own, he's your, 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 that you're his own. You see, the reason why we can find hope in him, the reason why Paul right now is trying to tell us in this little uh, couple of verses that there is someone greater than yourself. That greater person is always looking out for you. That greater person is always guiding you. You have to leave yourself open to hear his words and hear his direction. He will plant seeds and nuggets to get you in the right place at the right time in the right season. And when the times get too bad, the winds get too rough and the going gets too tough, oh, set, set your anchor on for firm and secure rock of him. The hope rock, which is our savior, the hope rock, which you can put your anchor on. Because God, right now, my faith is in you. My hope is in you. And I will trust you, Lord. Oh, when things get rough, he keeps his word. When things get tough, he's looking out for you. When it seems like the hill is too cloud to climb, he is right there by your side girding you up. Through it all, you have to trust him. Through it all, you have to believe in him. Through it all, you got to say, God, in you, I have my hope. I don't see the way out, but I have my hope in you. I don't know which way to go yet, but my hope is still in you. I don't know, Lord, the direction, but my hope is in you. And with that hope and with that trust, he will always be there for you. That firm thing you can put your anchor on, he will always be there for you. The one in whom you can trust, he will always be there for you. So set your anchor of faith 
on a solid rock that is your God. And he sees exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you need. And he will encourage you to just listen for a still, small voice in the midst of all the wilderness. Because he always speaks to you. So hold on to your faith. Cling to your hope. And trust, believe, God is always there. Let us pray, dear precious Father. We thank you, Lord, for hope in you. We thank you, Lord, for understanding, Lord, that right now that there are occasions where we have just plant our anchor on your word. Knowing, Lord, and have hope, Lord, that you are the one who will see us through. Knowing, Lord, that it is our hope that sustains us because you are a God who does not lie. You are a God who sees us, and you are a God who holds on to us. So, Lord, even though we want it to be different, we declare, Lord, that with our hope, we will hold on to your unchanging hand. And no matter what we face, we will trust in you and have the hope, the unmerited hope, the unending hope, the guided hope that you will see us through. Because on this hope, we'll stand. On this hope, we'll believe. And on this hope, we'll allow you to guide us to our next season. So thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We give you this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand all over the church. Is there one this morning that you have a hope in God, but you've never given yourself to him? This is the time that we open the doors of the church. It's not about membership. It's about fellowship with God. If you've never given yourself to him, now's the time to say, yes, I believe his son died and rose again. He's coming back for me. If you want to give yourself to God, now's the time. The doors of the church are open. In him, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. He is the rock on which we put our hopes and in which we stand firm. So to him who's able to keep us from falling, present us righteous in front of our Father with exceeding joy. May the only wise God, may he rest, may he rule, may abide in you. Now henceforth forevermore, and the people got sing together. Come to, get, to come to worship and lead us serve. Have a glorious day and week in the Lord.